ashwagandha, fenugreek with Tonga Ali, which ones are effective, which ones are hype. If you are already borderline, like emotionally numb as a person and you take ashwagandha, like you might literally like cease to care about anything. So your top four supplements for testosterone would be? Zinc, magnesium. I think one that I would, would be worth mentioning, all but the literature isn't super robust. It is a uh, boron. So that potentially has a suppressive effect on SHBG levels. There's some literature that looks promising, all but I wouldn't hang my hat on and say it's a guarantee. It's going to suppress your SHBG from like the high end of the reference range to something that's like much more, you know, much better, but like it may, it does seem to work for some people. And in general, it can be a supporting adjunct that some people are, it's not something you typically get through your diet in like significant quantities anyways. Like often people will, it'll come into multivitamin typically, but the quantity that moves the needle for SHBG, I believe it was like six to 12 milligrams and can be meaningful for actually liberating free testosterone, not for actually producing more total T. Um, the other one that's probably worth mentioning, ashwagandha, specifically uh, extract that is standardized to a sufficient quantity of withanolize, not just your standard run of the mill generic ashwagandha. You want to look for ideally a patented, you know, uh, Sensoril or a KSM 66. Is that the active compound that affects testosterone? Yeah, or? it seems to be. And when I say testosterone, yeah, Clarify. it's like <laughs> the indirect effect via suppressing uh, cortisol seemingly and kind of like the stress response manipulations that it can induce, which are favorable for people who are anxious, who have very stressful lifestyles, who could benefit from it. But it is not a catch all supplement that will benefit everyone. And some people, it will push them into anhedonia territory, which is like a numbing of emotion. What's a dose that would be considered overdoing it? And what's a dose that would maybe be effective for suppressing the cortisol response and indirectly affecting testosterone by not having the cortisol decreasing the testosterone? Like, I would go with the clinically like supported dose for something that's efficacious. I wouldn't necessarily suggest somebody you know, take something that's lower than what I've seen to actually work. But in general, it seems to be a cumulative effect over time. Maybe there are some people who might push you over the edge sooner. And like, certainly it's something to be cautious of and be aware of as a disclaimer before you jump on any testosterone augmenting supplements. Just be aware of the mechanism of how it works based on your own individual biochemistry, because this is not something like a vitamin D that you can just sequester into sub Q fat and just like get rid of at some point. It's like, it could impact your mood regulation quite significantly for a bit, depending on like what your neurotransmitter balance is at baseline. Like if you are already borderline, like emotionally numb as a person and you take ashwagandha, like you might literally like cease to care about anything for all I know. That uh, sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, for someone who is more of an anxious phenotype, like 600 milligrams, 600 every day, milligrams, I think is the dose, but double check on that because I might be misremembering. But right. I'm okay. pretty sure. And that is impactful. Um, to the tune of upwards of another 100 points, seemingly. I could be misremembering exactly, but it's like, I think it's triple digits pretty reliably for those who can benefit from it. And for some people, it's like a game changer supplement that really improves their quality of life outside of just the testosterone enhancing capacity of it. Because some people deal with a lot of stress in their life and need that extra resilience or suppression of how much it's affecting their mental state. Like some people, they can't even get to sleep because they're ruminating and they're constantly anxious and having that kind of suppressed uh, stress response can be very, very net beneficial. And then on top of that, improves their sleep and also improves their testosterone through the uh, reduction of the kind of like glucocorticoid responses. And yeah, so it's it, it works for sure. Tonkat Ali, another very notable one. This is one that um, works through a different mechanism. It seems to be a bit more speculative how it works, but it seems to do a few things potentially. One being minor uh, serum activity potentially, and this is more speculative. Serum is like a selective estrogen receptor modulator. So something that binds to estrogen receptors and either like positively or negatively modulates them in selective tissues. So there are certain tissues where it would be more favorable to have a selective inhibition of certain hormones versus others. It would be detrimental. Like you wouldn't want to inhibit estrogen's activity in bone, for example, because that would cause bone degradation. Um, having an inhibition at the hypothalamus level, level may, depending on the person, 
help increase testosterone via the inhibition of that feedback loop. Now, I don't necessarily think it is a CIRM. That's just like the tertiary potential mechanism, and it is speculative. The main mechanism that people seem to agree on that it does do, suppression of SHBG to some extent, as well as the uh, upregulation of steroidogenesis um, intratesticularly. So like locally upregulating, I believe it's steroidogenic acute regulatory protein that basically incorporates um, cholesterol into the mitochondria to actually undergo these enzymatic cleaving uh, sequences that result in the production of testosterone locally. So it seems to like help upregulate the process that actually uh, enzymatically spits out testosterone essentially uh, locally. So that one seems to work well for individuals who have high SHBG levels or um, potentially higher estrogen levels than they, you know, is otherwise fixable via basic lifestyle changes and whatnot. Because um, everyone has their own proportion of metabolism at the end of the day. It's not always going to be optimal, even if you have what is otherwise like a great diet and lifestyle. So similar to the ashwagandha, you want something that actually says this is how much of the literal ingredient that does what you're looking to get out of it in it. And here's a third party test to verify it. So. And what was that ingredient called again? Urecomenone. How does Tonkat Ali compare to like boron? Is it, I mean, it sounds like for men, it might be like you're getting a bigger bang because it's doing, it's working in two different ways. Yeah, it's a good question. Boron is a mineral that is, um, seems to be something that is, uh, mechanistically, I wouldn't be able to say um, for certain what the differential is well, the and SHBG, how they affect the SHBG right, yeah, binding right. complex. Like I would be trying to, I might misremember and I don't want to misspeak, yeah. so. Okay. Well, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. But would would the Tonkat LE work in women as well, just through the yeah. SHBG or maybe the, bo like, I don't know, which if, just for off the, like off the you know topic here, boron has also kind of been thought to potentially be a longevity molecule as well. There's some mm. evidence that boron may be involved in like improving aging. So yeah. when you said boron, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> that yeah. sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like that's almost like a lower hanging fruit thing because it's just typically part of a multivitamin that may just not be dosed high enough and you can just like stack on top and see if it has an incremental decrease to SHBG. And then the Tonkat is like, more of a speculative one that you don't want to just like take until you've exhausted some of the other options, but it's like the more exotic kind of like hammer that you might want to take to the situation if it's like your last resort before, you know, I've tried everything, my lifestyle's perfect, my diet's dialed, my micronutrients are accounted for, my sleep is good, I don't drink, I don't smoke, and my total tea is still inadequate and I don't feel that great. Should I try some of this, like one of these exotic things that seems to have a reasonable safety profile and like an efficacious, you know, um, you know, impact in men and young healthy men at that. Like there are literature showing the effects in young healthy men, not just like age related, like declined men. So notable. So your top four supplements for testosterone would be? Zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, not in order, just the top three, I would say. And then I guess for impact, I would probably say like Tonkat Ali, but probably boron would be my safer next choice just for like safety profile. 